Hey everyone, I'm here to share with you our recent paper in Computers and Fluids on developing stable time step formulas for high order Navier Stokes solvers. So, in the context of explicit uh, CFD, any CFD practitioner always faces the question of choosing a stable time step size. And this is typically driven by uh, a need to have a stable solution that does not diverge. And the formulas that we commonly use are based on advective and diffusive CFLs that are derived from a forward in time, central and space discretization uh, scheme on the advection diffusion equation. However, in practice, many codes use high order integration in time and different discretization schemes on advection. Despite this fact, many codes still use these uh, first order CFL conditions. The purpose of this paper is to actually find out what these formulas become in the case of second, third order, fourth order Runge-Kutta or other discretization schemes on, adv on advection and or diffusion. First, I wanna make a few observations. And the first one is that the stability region can be entirely characterized by the Kura and Peclet numbers. This is critical because it will reduce our space when we interpret these stability conditions. Now, this could be derived either from dimensional arguments or from the stability polynomial itself. I'll show here the dimensional argument, for example. In one dimension, we're looking at a stable time step delta t as a function of grid resolution delta x, advective velocity u, and diffusion coefficient k. If you apply the Buckingham pi theorem to these three parameters, one ends up with two dimensionless numbers. We choose the Courant number and the Peclet number to be the most convenient because the Peclet number can be related to the cell Reynolds number. Remember, our objective is to apply these formulas to Navier-Stokes solvers. In three dimensions, things become a little bit more complicated because you have more dimensionless parameters. We discussed this in the paper, uh, but here we will focus on the 1D case. Similarly, the stability polynomial, uh, you can easily extract um, the advection, the Courant number and the Peclet number from that. Now, going back to these FTCS or the standard stability criteria derived for forward Euler and central in space on advection, for the advection diffusion equation, those two can be easily converted then to a Courant and Peclet, Courant and Peclet number conditions. And then when you plot them on a Courant versus Peclet number plot, you get an invariant stability region independent of grid resolution, diffusion coefficient, advective velocity, uh, where you can extract directly the Courant number and therefore the stable time step given a certain Peclet number. Okay. Now, in practice, the way we're going to apply this is that in a simulation, as the advecting velocity changes, one is going to move, your Peclet number is going to change, and therefore you're going to move between different points on this plot. Now, on to the formulas. First, we will start with central advection and central diffusion discretization. This is the most common discretization scheme used both for scalar transport and for uh, momentum equations. We have uh, the, these stability rules in one, two, and three dimensions. You just have to adjust the summation uh, depending on, uh, on your dimension. Now, observe that we have two rules for each integrator, forward Euler, RK2, RK3, RK4, shown in that plot below Courant versus Peclet. These two rules, we call them inner and outer regions. They roughly correspond to low Peclet limit or diffusion-dominated flows and high Peclet limit or convection-dominated flows. Uh, in the paper, we explained that those are actually related also to the wave angles of the uh, eigenvalues. Uh, we'll dis we discussed that in the paper. But notice how the curves change over here, how the Courant number, especially in the high Peclet, uh, Peclet region, goes higher and higher as we go to higher order integrators as expected because RK3, RK4 have higher stability regions um, and they're convectively more space stable than RK2 and forward Euler. Now in the inner region where diffusion dominated, what's interesting is that all of these integrators share a similar uh, Courant number. They're almost on top of each other. So we don't expect much improvement with time step selection in the inner region. To verify our formulas, we compare the proposed formulas shown here in the table to numerically obtained stable time steps and Courant numbers. So we took the 
stability polynomial and solved for the stable time step based on different eigenvalues, different Peclet numbers. So we varied the, the advecting velocity, the grid resolution, and the diffusion coefficient. And this is what we obtained. Our, uh, our uh, formulas are shown in red and blue for inner and outer respectively. And the numerical ones are shown in these black dots. And we represent those curves. The proposed formulas are very, very good representations of those numerical curves. Now on to upwind on advection center on diffusion. In this case, we were able to get exact an exact solution, solve the um, stability polynomial analytically. Uh, so I have to say that all of the formulas proposed here, they were derived analytically using uh, both analytical, solu analytical techniques and perturbation theory where we perturb the stability polynomial in the small and high Peclet number limits, also described in the paper in detail. In this case, we were able to get the solutions exactly and to the extent that it is impossible to distinguish the numerical from the analytical uh, curves here on this plot for this case. When we go to flux limited on advection and stay central on diffusion, then you'd expect that if your flux limiter is based on the standard combination of a first order upwind and second order central discretization, then you'd expect a combination of both of the tables uh, discussed previously. And this is exactly what we get. Uh, there are two rules for forward Euler RK2, but RK3 and RK4, only the inner rule uh, dominates, gives you the most conservative stable time step. Uh, going to higher order uh, upwind on advection, uh, we consider the case schemes described here. We consider only k less than or equal to zero in this case and we're able to obtain also uh, exact analytical solutions in this case except for forward Euler we have two rules the other integrators have only a single a single rule and finally uh, for if you consider only the advection equation and apply upwind uh, we know that the maximum Quran number for forward Euler is one but what is the Quran number for rk2 rk3 rk4 uh, this is summarized in this table terms out for RK2, the maximum Quran number is still one, but RK3 pushes you up to 1.26 and RK4 pushes it up to 1.39. Now in practice, there's some work that needs to be done in your code to implement this. It's not really significant. First, you compute the local Peclet numbers at each grid point for the three momentum equations, right? So you have U, V, and W, you compute the Peclet numbers or the local cell Reynolds numbers, but then you would also need to compute the three Peclet numbers for each additional scalar equation because those equations might have uh, different diffusion coefficients, right? Uh, next, at each grid point, you compute the stable time step delta t from the formulas presented in the tables. Simply pull out uh, the delta t. Also, for the free momentum equations, you're going to have one delta t, but for each scalar equation, you're going to have another delta t. For inner, for, for inner and outer rules, when you have an inner and outer rule because you have a central discretization scheme on advection, for example, then you need to take the minimum of the inner and the outer, but you will have a delta T for each equation still locally. Then finally, you compute the global stable time step by taking the minimum of all these time steps across the entire, uh, across the entire domain. To demonstrate our cases, now clearly those were derived from the linear advection diffusion equation, but we want to try to apply them on Navi and an actual Navi Stokes solvers. This is exactly what we did. Um, we started by taking a turbulent jet test case. Uh, this is a canonical jet. Uh, we tested it uh, a, a, over a few different Reynolds numbers. Uh, remember what I said in the plot earlier for central, uh, ad, central on advection, central on diffusion. In the small Peclet regime, all the integrators uh, stability regions were on top of each other. So for small Reynolds numbers, we're going to expect to see similar time step uh, sizes for all integrators. But when we go to higher Reynolds numbers, we're going to expect a separation uh, between the stable time steps and Quran numbers. And this is where RK2 and RK3 are going to shine. This is exactly what we observe in this plot. These are the actual adaptive time steps. So we use these formulas to essentially adapt our time stepper uh, for the case of Reynolds number of 100 
all time steps were of the same size. You see RK2 and forward Euler right on top of each other on that upper left plot and RK3 slightly better. But when you go to Reynolds number 100,000, then forward Euler time steps are around 10 to the minus seven, while RK2 around 10 to the minus four. So three orders of magnitude improvement and four orders of magnitude improvement for the uh, case of RK3. This is very significant. Now, this is not saying that your uh, solution is not going to have perhaps some oscillations. That's not the question we're addressing here. The question we're addressing here is having a simulation that will not diverge, will not blow up. Um, another case we wanted to test to see how we can go from the inner region to the outer region was a heated driven cav heated cavity. Sorry. So this is a cavity heated on the right hand side with a heating rate coefficient that we can adjust. Um, and as the flow accelerates, we expect initially to be in the inner region, diffusion dominated as the flow accelerates, we're gonna to move to the outer region. That's where we see a we're gonna see a separation between the different integrators. And indeed, this is exactly what we see. Uh, for the lower heating rates, there's not much difference again between all integrators because we're in the inner region. But with a higher heating rate, we're going to start initially for about you know 0.1 second uh, in the inner region. All time steps are almost identical on that upper right plot. But then as we as the flow starts accelerating, you're going to see forward Euler time stepping drop because we transition to the outer region. But RK2, RK3 provide you higher Quran numbers and higher stable time steps. Um, thank you so much for listening in. I hope this paper will be useful for you, for your work, for your research. We'd love to hear from you. Um, just reach out either in the comments or by email. Uh, and your tuning in is much appreciated. Thank you.